from open plans made long ago, came a year without hindsight. 2020. I think Orwell was warning, but Huxley and Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum were bragging. I stumbled upon this passage 80% of the way through Mr. Schwab's July 2020 book, COVID-19, The Great Reset. Quote, There is no denying that the COVID-19 virus has more often than not been a personal catastrophe for the millions infected by it, and for their families and communities. However, at a global level, if viewed in terms of the percentage of the global population affected, the corona crisis is, so far, one of the least deadly pandemics the world has experienced over the last 2,000 years. In all likelihood, unless the pandemic evolves in an unforeseen way, the consequences of COVID-19 in terms of health and mortality will be mild compared to the previous pandemics. At the end of June 2020, at the time when the outbreak is still raging in Latin America, Southeast Asia, and much of the U.S., COVID-19 has killed less than 0.006% of the world population. To put this low figure into context in terms of lethality, the Spanish flu killed 2.7% of the world's population, and HIV-AIDS 0.6% from 1981 to today. The plague of Justinian, from its onset in 541 until it finally disappeared in 750, killed almost one-third of the population of Byzantium, according to various estimates. And the Black Death, 1347 through 1351, is considered to have killed between 30% and 40% of the world population at the time. The corona pandemic is different. It does not constitute an existential threat, or a shock that will leave its imprint on the world's population for decades. However, it does entail worrisome perspectives for all the reasons already mentioned. In today's interdependent world, Risks conflate with each other, amplifying their reciprocal effects and magnifying their consequences. Much of what's coming is unknown, but we can be sure of the following. In the post-pandemic world, questions of fairness will come to the fore, ranging from stagnating real incomes for the vast majority to the redefinition of our social contracts. Similarly, deep concerns about the environment or questions about how technology can be deployed and governed for the benefit of society will force their way onto the political agenda. All of these issues predated the pandemic, but COVID-19 has both laid them bare for all to see and amplified them. The directions of the trends hasn't changed, but in the wake of COVID-19, it got a lot faster. I was surprised to stumble upon these sentences within Mr. Schwab's Technocratic Teacher's Guide for the Great Reset. He seems to strongly agree with one position I've taken ever since we started seeing data. Quote, the coronavirus pandemic is different. It does not constitute an existential threat or a shock that will leave its imprints on the world's population for decades, end quote. But to me, that means presidents and governors should not have declared states of emergency and opened up the authoritarian toolboxes. He took his COVID tragedy estimate from June, but the updated COVID-related mortality count from Worldometers as of December 23rd is 1.7 million worldwide. So out of an estimated 7.7 .7 billion, the COVID-related death toll thus far is approximately 0.02% of the world's population. This is a significant increase from Mr. Schwab's June estimate of 0.006%, but I would still say that 0.02% does not represent an existential threat. Overall, the folks in the World Economic Forum, Wall Street, and other structures of the superclass seem quite happy about the direction we're headed in. They would never let a big crisis go to waste, and are reshaping the global economy in line with their pre-existing plans for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. It's worth noting that the bulk of the chronic global issues were directly enabled by imperial governments fighting to aid international megacorporations for centuries. This is the same clique that built this unsustainable interdependence while outsourcing the most blatant forms of slavery. Nobody elected them, so I'm not sure why they appear to be driving the big show.